So Leon, first of all, thanks very much for, for joining us. It's, it's great to have you with us to discuss the Carabao Cup quarterfinals. Obviously, Everton are the team in focus for you. It's been a great start to the season for them, hasn't it? It really has. Um, you know, optimism was was really high after Carlo Ancelotti made his, his summer signings, bringing in Richarlison, Alan, James Rodriguez. Um, you know, the quality of players he was able to to bring to the club and believe in the project he's, he's going about at Everton was was fantastic. And then to have the likes of, of Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Michael Keane, I feel, has also stepped up massively. To have them really raise their games to the level they're playing at now is uh, is magnificent. I was going to say, there seems to be something different about them this season. There's obviously been some change at the club, as you, as you just mentioned. What's impressed you most about them so far this season? Uh... I think their belief in themselves, you know, going into to any game, I feel like Everton are trying to win the game, have a, a clear idea how to win the game. Um, and I think when you've got Everton's first 11 players out, I think they're a match for, for anybody in the Premier League. I think that, you know, went through a, a tricky couple of games last month when um, injuries and suspensions hit hard in certain positions, losing fullbacks. Uh, Richarlison missing for three games. He's been key for Everton since he joined. Uh, but even despite that, Carlo and his men have found a way to get back to, to win and ways, scoring goals again and um, looking positive. And obviously you made over 400 appearances for Everton. The, the club obviously close to your heart. You enjoyed some special times there, didn't you? Really did. Um, from my debut right up to, to the last game I played there. Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed it, even from the time when I left school. I joined as a, um, a bright-eyed youth, you know, trying to make my way in the game. And, you know, looking back now, it's, I've got some terrific memories of, of the whole time. Um, not all good. You know, I remember my first game in the Carabao Cup back in 2003. I came on in extra time away at Middlesbrough. And uh, stepped up to take a penalty kick. We lost 5-4. I was the only person to miss a penalty that night. And, and the team went out the cup competition. So, I think my first Carabao Cup game, or Carling Cup game, I think it was back then, like, scarred me for life. But since then, it's, uh, you know, it, it all got a bit better. And just on the League Cup and Everton's, you know, time in, in playing in the League Cup, the twice runners-up, but never won the competition... Do you think that's something that plays on the mind of the club and the players at the club? Um, I don't think it weighs on the modern generation. Uh, those players within the team right now, they can't affect anything that happened in the past. They can only affect um, what's happening in the present and what may happen in the, in the near future. So it doesn't weigh heavy on their minds. I think that, you know, as fans, when we get in conversations with fans of other clubs and, you know, Within that conversation, we mentioned that we haven't won the um, the League Cup. Then, you know, it's something that we feel we have to rectify. I think that you know, if you also look at the fact it's been 1995 since Everton last won a bit of silverware. It's it's something that is desperately needed at Everton, and I feel that in Carlo Ancelotti, I think it's something that he's taken seriously. I think he's he's understanding that to bit of win a bit of silverware would be absolutely huge for the club, and I think you've seen that in his team selections in the competition. I say we'll, we'll come on to the, the silverware in just a moment, but the League Cup is obviously traditional, traditionally sorry, the first piece of silverware of the season for, for a club to win. In that sense, it's an important competition, isn't it? Because a trophy at this stage in the season can do so much for you going into that final third of the league season. Yeah, I think it's huge. You look at you know, some of the teams that have won it in the past. I think when Jose Mourinho first went into Chelsea, it was the first trophy he won that went on and propelled his side to have the belief to, to win the Premier League and go on the run they did. And I think, um, you know, that's been the case for, for a number of managers, Pep Guardiola as well. You know, so if you can get that winning mentality, if you can bring silverware, you can show the players that it's well within their capabilities to be winning silverware at the club, then, you know, that's only going to strengthen... Um, what you're trying to achieve and you know Carlo Ancelotti's um, no it's nothing new for him to be you know competing at the latter stages of cup finals and um, trying to win league titles so he'll be explaining to his side you know it all starts very simply by winning the games getting to getting through first rounds getting through quarter finals getting to the final and 
you know, taking it step by step. But ultimately, you know, that bit of silverware, that first piece of silverware of the season, I, I think is massive. And you, you just touched on it there, but obviously Carlo Ancelotti, he's a man who knows how to win trophies. He's an excellent manager, you know, with tons of experience in the game. That's certainly showing uh, with their form so far this season. But if, if, you know, if there's a season where they're going to win a trophy, he's arguably the man to, to do that for them. Yeah, you know, of all the managers Everton have had in, you know, you know the past 50, 20 years, I'd say, you know, he's, he's without doubt won, won the most in his career. So he knows how to get across the line. He knows how to win particular games. He, and what he, he needs his squad to, to do to achieve that. So, you know, you've even seen in Everton's form this year, it started really well. Um, as I said, with a fully fit squad, things went against the team, lost a couple on the run. But it didn't phase him. He didn't. He didn't panic. It didn't change him. He's got so much experience. He made a cu- couple of tweaks. Actually, altered Everton's style of play um, to benefit what players he had available. And Everton started winning games again. So he's a very experienced manager, and I feel that the players and the club are, are tapping into that quite well at the moment. And you're someone who knows. You know. You know the city. You know the fans. We've talked about the, the long wait for silverware at Everton, but how good would it be for the fans of the club to experience that and experience winning a trophy? What, what would it mean to them? Well, it's huge. You know, as I said, to, to have gone for so long without any kind of silverware is, is more than disappointing for, for a club of Everton's stature. So, you know, the sooner that that is um, rectified, the better. And then, you know, Everton being the club that, that we are, that won't be the be-all and end-all. It's, it's hopefully the start. It's going to be the, the first step on progressing back to being uh, a team competing for trophies every single year. So, you know, you look at our other clubs, I think Spurs are, are in a similar position. You need to get that first piece of silverware to then have the belief to go on and, uh, and make a real legacy for yourself. And, and Carlo Ancelotti has the knowledge of how to do that. And I think he's building a squad that are looking, starting to look capable of that. And one player I just want to touch on is, is Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's, he's someone who's certainly having a season to remember. And he's worked his way up the leagues as well. I know he spent some time on loan at EFL clubs. And this season, you'd probably say he's been as impressive as he's ever been. How, how impressed have you been with him in the Everton shirt? Well, as you said, the, the, word, the word is impressive. He's been ever so impressive, I think. Um, since the start of this season, I think he scored, you know, a quarter, if not a third, of, of all of his goals in his career. So he's really, he's really stepped up his levels from starting at uh, Staley Bridge back at, at first, and then moving to Sheffield United. And you know, he's he's got a, a good bit of experience behind him. He's played at different levels. He knows what um, what what you have to do to achieve goals at different levels of of football. And I think that served him well to to get to where he's got. But there's no, there's no doubting that in the past year, he's really stepped up his game since the arrival of, of Carlo Ancelotti, since working closely with, with Duncan Ferguson. They've just, it's as if they've just made him realise where a player with his abilities, where he'll be most effective. It's within the width of the goal. It's with, you know, within 12 yards of, of the goal as well. One touch finishing, getting in a position where his, his leap and his stature and his finishing can really... Uh, cause the opposition problems and you know when you've got deliveries that he's been seeing as well Luca Dean Hamid Rodriguez in particular putting the service into him for him to go and attack I think uh, it's been highlighted in his goal return and, and finally uh, they've got a tough game ahead of them haven't they in the, in the quarterfinals so Manchester United obviously no stranger to this competition do you think they've got what it takes to get past Manchester United in the quarterfinals and, and hopefully go all the way this season well, they've certainly got what it takes. Um, I know Manchester United beat beat Everton earlier in the season, but you know Everton have have got what it takes to to beat Manchester United. They've got a manager who knows how to win over the course of a season, but also more importantly, an individual game and an individual tie. Um, and also, as well, you know, you look at Manchester United; they are very Jekyll and Hyde this year. Not only game to game, but within a 90 minutes of football, they can go from the ridiculous to the sublime. The, um, the defending sometimes leaves a bit to be desired and then they rely heavily on, on what they can achieve going forward. So I'm sure Carlo Ancelotti would be looking to nullify that to try and make it that Manchester United start the game slowly as they have done in the past and Everton can capitalise on that. 